Jill Furrow's decision to attend suicide clinic. That's a partner. Well. Mm. A retired nurse from London who travelled to Switzerland to end her life disliked the indignity of ageing, her partner has said. Jill Furrow, 75, was apparently healthy when she made the decision to go to the Life Circle Clinic in Basel. Campaigners against assisted dying have described the case as chilling. But her partner John Southall told the BBC, choosing the time you die is a human right. Miss Furrow, he's called John Southall, or well maybe they weren't married, I don't know, wrote a blog published by the Sunday Times. I feel my life is complete and I'm ready to die. She said while she was largely healthy. An attack of shingles five years ago and tinnitus had made it difficult to take part in the activities she had once enjoyed. Now, I tell you what, this is running with Scylla Black, isn't it? Because if you look at the stuff, what, um, right. Scylla Black was ailing and willed herself to die, according to a long-time friend. The star, who had a string of pop hits in the 60s before presenting TV show... Blah, blah, blah. Um, childhood friend turned me cancer. Black told him she knew she, was da- she knew she was going to die. And her beloved late husband, Wills, was waiting for me. Post-mortem examination had been carried out. Right, what she said was... Um, she didn't want to get old. Right? Uh, the last thing she said to me, she was going blind, she showed me her hands. Bob is waiting for me. Her mother went the same way. I don't know what her mother died of, but it seems she associated it with her mother's death. And she knew it was going to happen. She just took me, look at me, and I'm a wreck. I was trying to cheer her up. She knew something we didn't. She knew she was going to die, and she, and she said she wasn't going to linger like her mother. She wasn't going to linger like her mother. Jill Farrow didn't want to put pressure on her friends and family and the NHS. She didn't want to take a bed up. So she decided to... Now this woman's got a couple of books out on back to um, caring for people, you know, up to the point of death and sort of, you know, it all ties in. Do Do I believe this woman killed herself? No. No, I think she's alive and well somewhere. Absolutely alive and well somewhere. Uh, and I find that quite a strange name. Jill Furrow. <laughs> Furrows, the Furrows. And this is my control. And this is suicide programming. The same as a hell of a lot of channels on YouTube are doing. Without you realising it. And one of them is to, you know, make you lose the will to live. Oh, it's the end days and all this stuff. Right? So you go around in your world with this negative, depressed outlook that it's the end of the world and you go and ruin everybody else's lives. Right? There's the facts. Uh, Your government is suicide programming through the media and it's objective. There's a hell of a lot of suicide going on, people. You know, it's the biggest killer in males right now, in England, right? And probably the world. So, they lay it on thick now and they give you this, you know, this hero. This woman who's a hero. If you go, you know, oh, she didn't want to be a burden. I just find it disgusting that they've ran that in the, the sun. Right? And they've told you about this woman. No picture of her. You know, he bravely killed herself for the world to be a better place. And you've got a shelf life, and you know, 70 to 75 is about right. Yeah, this is also to get this suicide brought to the United Kingdom, you know, assisted suicide. Get it over here. A couple of years, I reckon, it'll start filtering in. Now, You've got to understand that there are people that are in terrible pain. But if you're in that much pain, 
you know, they're going to control that pain till you naturally, well, till you die anyway, aren't they? You know, or if you're in that much pain, you're going to have that much painkiller that the painkiller will kill you. So I would say assisted suicide is alive and well in the United Kingdom. And I would also say there are many angels of death that walk the hospitals at night. Right? See, I'm not against the mercy killing. Neither were the early Christians. But times were tough. You know, I suppose if you were a very bad cripple, like you didn't really, you, you, there was it wasn't like now, was it? So, but I would say that you know, if someone was obviously going to die and they're in agony from a wound, and you put a brick over their head, don't you? You know, you mainly put that person out of the misery. So, on one hand of this, I'm not condoning it, I'm condemning it, but I'm just saying, you know, there is, you know, if a dog's riddled with cancers, big lumps all over him or her, and she's in total agony, you know, the vet puts that dog down. But these, and this is the trick, this woman was perfectly healthy, right? A sportsman said it sends out a chilling message about how society values and looks after elderly people in the UK. It seeks the introduction of death on demand for those who fear becoming a burden, even if they are otherwise fit and healthy. Her partner, John Southall, told BBC London he had put a lot of questions to her over the years about her intention to give or to get help to take her own life, but said he saw it as her decision. He said, It was not for me to feel confident in her decision but I did agree with the rational and the logic he explained that in her career as a palliative care nurse she had seen a lot of people in pretty miserable circumstances it gave her a dislike of the indignity of that he added choosing the time to die is a human right who should deny us that right but it's also sort of like to want to die it's sort of like a mental illness isn't it in this case because this woman was a perfectly fit and healthy 75 year old lady she had grandchildren she had children she's got a couple of books out so you know, it's all very very odd isn't it I just want to give us an heads up I think this goes into mind and all that you see we're gonna I'm gonna do some more on it size looking into it more to come on it I'm slowing down now I'll still be putting the odd one up but I'm not doing them all day every day nor am I spending every hour of every day um, trying to gain information off YouTube because what I, what I miss and what I forget I'm not going to worry about it because a lot of, uh, well 99% of that's fear programming just trying to put doubt in your mind oh no you're going to sell a black so on the same page so there you go there's your connect. I knew they were connected. Well, I knew it. I just knew it. There's your connect. Well, it's not letting us in. But not to worry. Let's see what the little window says. Silla Black has died aged 72 of natural causes at home in Spain. It was announced today. The Spanish police confirmed the death of the former singer. Now, it's got Jill Ferro at the top there, but it's not letting me go to the page. Oh, yeah, it is. So... So, you know, because Scylla said, like, you know, she, she wanted to die. And and then you've got this other old lady here. And it's, you know, I just feel like they're tying in, you know, feral. And I mean, on, on, on the top of that, and at the end of all days, right, you don't need to go to Switzerland to be dispatched, do you? I mean, what would you need? You just need, a, you know, any tall building would do, wouldn't it? No one can stop you killing yourself, can they? What do you need? A razor blade? You know, some tablets? Half a bottle of whiskey? You know, what do you need to kill yourself? So it's all bollocks anyway, isn't it? Well, I can say this now, legally. Uh, many years ago, when my dad was alive, my auntie Ella... And she was like 96, she was blind, 
And she was at that point where she wanted to die. Now... And she asked my dad, and my dad went into the medicine cupboard, got a load of her tablets, put them outside the table for her, and she ended her own life. She slipped into a coma, he rang an ambulance, the ambulance came, she went into the hospital where she died, right? So I would say my Auntie Ella had far more about her than this woman here. My Auntie Ella wasn't going on the news first, was she? You know, so, you know, putting programming programming people to... Um, and plus which my Auntie Ella would have never died when she was healthy. She was blind, she was immobile. And my dad passed her a tablet, right? Was he a murderer? I don't know. Will he have stood in front of God? Absolutely. But the part I'm making is, this, this is a program against the people it's depressing to the max and it's stupid and it's wrong and I thought I'd do a little video on it right I'll do another one in a couple of days um, like I said I'm not you know I've given a lot of my time to YouTube right and I will continue but I'm just not doing it at that level or pace because it's irrelevant right you know, the amount of people in the real world that give a shit about what gets said on YouTube makes YouTube irrelevant anyway. Right. Yeah, there's some far out channels and like, you know, they get loads of views in that, but like we're discovering. They're dodgy, aren't they? You know. Certain people coming on going, Oh YouTube, you're so out of order, you've done this and that to me, but we know that they're working for YouTube. Because we can see it off the figures. Right, and you know, on the road with the donates and all that, well, just whatever. Whatever. Oh, I've monetized my channel so I get a fraction of a penny so we can get millions of views and get some money. In. Well, I only get views by talking crazy shit. So I'll talk crazy shit and I'll have a big channel. And I'll, you know, I will let the people's will sway me then. Like someone said, look at your ratings, and I said, well, look, if you if you had the balls to put anything up on your channel, you'd be working for them ratings, whereas I don't. See, which is uh, another great thing about the Crossman channel. Right, okay, people, big love, I will be one. Don't be like this idiot here. Right, she's probably alive and well anyway. You know what I mean, people. Following fraudulent court action a few days ago, we're going to go straight over to. Guy Taylor, who's on site at the moment. Guy, have we got you? Can you hear me? I can. Uh, we've, we've got you 90 degrees out, so if you could just try moving that phone. 90 again. degrees out? Yeah. We'll right, see. okay, 90 degrees, so... Uh, Go back to portrait. Is, is that all right? Yes, that's it. Stay Go there. back to portrait. That's great. Keep Stay there. Is that okay? Is that okay? That's perfect. Stay there and speak. Have we got it? Yes. Right. Okay. 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 So, um, about one o'clock today, uh, Tom's supporters got back into the house. 